Japan is surrounded by the ocean. Since ancient times, people have obtained their food from the ocean. Besides fish, seaweeds have been important food for religious ceremonies or as tributes. Seaweeds must have been a vital source of nutrition for people in the past. Nowadays, Japanese people widely accept Western-style dietary life, but seaweeds are continuously consumed and still play a significant part of the Japanese recipes. Nori or porphyra is often used for rice balls or seaweed rolls in Japanese food. Let's study how nori is cultivated and delivered to the consumers. From a long time ago, people have harvested seaweeds which grow on rocks. The Japanese seashores are rich with peninsulas and inland seas enough to have abundant seaweeds in shallow water. Cultivation of nori began in the Edo period. Asakusa nori or Porphyra tenera was the first to be cultivated. At that time, many poles called soda were set in shallow water. People did not know where the seeds of nori came from. So fishermen just waited until nori on the surface of soda poles fully grew before harvesting. In 1949, Dr. Drew in England found out that the spore of nori grew on seashells. Based on her findings, the Japanese phycologists studied the ecology of nori. This made it possible to establish the modern method of seaweed cultivation. Before, the production of nori was not efficient, and nori itself went bad easily and lost its color quickly. Choosing the best breed of nori helps improve the efficiency of cultivation today. Researchers, however, have yet to find ways to higher efficiency and better quality. Nowadays, Narawa susabinori, a breed of porphyra, is most widely used. Let's see the actual cultivation of nori. From late autumn to the end of winter, nori grows one after another. Asexual spores are produced on the leaf-shaped porphyra, and these spores germinate after the harvest. Therefore, nori can be harvested repeatedly throughout winter. But in the early spring, when the temperature of seawater increases, sexual spores are produced on the leaf-shaped porphyra instead. Male spores, or spermium, and female spores, or capogonium, fertilize, and then carpal spores are formed. These spores do not germinate immediately, but fall into the bottom of the sea and germinate on the seashell surface as small diploid generation called concosilus. In this phase, porphyra is filamentous. For cultivation, couple spores are collected from the leaf-shaped porphyra and planted on the net. This is a cooperative house with a fisherman's union. The house is a breeding ground for spore fixation on oyster shells. The cultured concosilus are cut into small pieces 
and spray it in a seawater pool. In the pool, the oyster shells are densely arranged by hanging with wires in the seawater. The pieces of conchosilus on oyster shells grow and form conchose spores on the filaments. These conchose spores will soon become nori. Water temperature and duration of sunlight should be regulated carefully for the induction of spore breeding. On seashores in the eastern coast of Japan, you can find some interesting sceneries. Many water wheels are running. They are placing the concourse spores on the cultivation nets. Fishermen must be very careful when checking the spore fixation using microscopes. For one week or so, the cultivation nets with spores are stored in the large refrigerator and wait for the seawater to reach an appropriate temperature and salt concentration. that it's time to spread the net with spores in the open sea. There are two different methods of cultivation. One is to fix the net to the poles and the other is to float the net on the sea surface. The first method is considered better in a certain way because several hours of exposure to the air in a day is essential for cultivation. Otherwise, the other kinds of seaweeds would grow on the net. The second method, on the other hand, makes it possible to cultivate in the deep sea. Therefore, a larger field of cultivation is possible. But it is necessary to expose the net to the air for some time. Porphyra grows up to 10 to 15 centimeters after a month in the seawater. The harvest starts at the beginning of November and becomes busier in January and February. In the early morning, even before the sunrise, Fishermen head to the cultivation field by boats. They have to harvest in the early morning in order to have the nori processed within a day. A specially designed board is used for harvesting nori. The board goes under the cultivation net and cuts off the leaves of nori from under the net. The board is soon filled with nori leaves. They are transferred 
and brought back to the port by another boat. At the port, fishermen's wives are working hard. They clean boxes and tools. Throughout the winter, you can see many couples working together at the port. The harvest at Nori is pumped up from the boat and carried to the processing factory. This is a Nori processing factory. The fresh Nori is well washed at first and cut into small pieces. Then, they are sent to the Nori processing machine. The Nori is washed with fresh water, not with sea water. Since the cells of Nori are easily broken in fresh water, the production process must be finished as quickly as possible. After the nori is cut into small pieces, they are poured into the square filter boxes filled with water. The nori will later be dehydrated by a machine and gently heated until it's completely dry. The dried nori is bundled into 10 sheets each, then graded according to the quality. The nori is sold by bidding and sent to department stores, supermarkets and shops in towns. This is how the harvested nori is processed into commercial products. Nori contains rich mineral nutrition and vitamins. Being one of the healthy choice of food produced in Japan, Nori is recommended to people all over the world.